want to talk to you about um, a kind or a group of houses in Kuwait that I find interesting. And it's hard to define these houses, with that. let's just say they're the houses that uh, are out of place, out of style, and outright weird. So, but I'm an architecture student, so this is the kind of house that I learn about in college. And just take a moment to appreciate how well it fits in the surroundings, how gracefully it's with, with uh, what's around it. Now this is another example that we study, at, uh, study about in college. Now forget the house, focus on the architect, which is Ms. Van der Rohe, and just look at his face, look at his suit, and you just know that he knows what he's doing, that he's a genius, and that he can design a masterpiece of a practice. But this is what we study in college, this is what I see in the streets. <laughs> now it makes quite the contrast, doesn't it? So, you can realize just with a glance, it's a peculiar house, it's strange, and a house like this will never fit in its surroundings, it will always stand out. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. This kind of house. But it's not just that house, it's that when you walk around Kuwait, uh, there's something that I can only describe as a culture of weirdness. This, this tendency for people to build houses that scream for attention, that don't fit in, uh, and that uh, always stand out. So this is one example uh, of a way that people make their house stand out, choosing the weird color. Now these are not exactly houses, but you can see that if you choose a, a color template like this, that your house, no matter where you build it, will always be the weird house in the street. Uh, another way to make your house weird is uh, by choosing a weird building style. And there are popular ideas in Kuwait, like making your house look like a Greek temple, or having a couple of lions by your door, or by making your facade break into a lot of uh, boxes with disorganized windows. <laughs> but of course, there are some people that don't just set it to be weird, some people want to be the weirdest. And these people choose the perfect combination of weird colors and weird styles to come up with something truly special, something that you cannot forget because these things have become landmarks in their own right. <laughs> now, this culture of weirdness has become so widespread in Kuwait that we barely notice them. We uh, drive around, we see pink houses, yellow houses, houses that look like uh, castles or cupcakes, dungeons or um, anything, but we rarely notice how bizarre this is. And here I'll, I'll pose a few questions. So, is it so bad that we're surrounded by these flamboyant, flashy houses? And if so, would you change them? So if you had the button that would change all these houses into white, would you push that button? Yeah. Well, I had the same answer, but with time I changed my mind. And um, I, despite my architectural suspicion of anything pink, I started liking pink houses, not just pink houses, all shades of uh, weird houses, and I mentioned three reasons. Um, the first reason I like these houses is that because they make me happy. So it's not, it's not that the boys are kind of happy. It's an actual smile that is drawn on my face whenever I see a house like this. And I, I promise you, if you squint your eyes, you will find a, a beauty here that you will not find in Villa Savoy or with Miss Van Der this, this is another house that uh, I personally like. And how, how can you not smile when you see a house like that? I would like, I think I'd be happier if I pass this house every day to work. Um, and it, it's an aqua blue castle in Germany, so what's not to love? <laughs> now, the, the second way, uh, the second reason I like these houses, and here I'm going to talk specifically about houses that um, are copies of architectural styles outside of Kuwait. So this one is almost as Greek as the Parthenon, and even houses in Greece are not, not the celebratory of the Greek culture. Now, I, I really think that um, there's something to cherish and respect in the fact that uh, we are open to copy and uh, import uh, uh, architecture styles from outside because it shows a tolerance and an openness to the outside uh, that we dearly need. And most importantly, it's important to understand that this is 
not just a few weird houses that I've shown in a culture and on a country of great architecture. This is our architecture, no matter whether we like it or not. And, and so, since it has become part of our culture, why not embrace it? Why not let the creative architect uh, embrace, um, improve, and try to make these houses into better? Because these are not masterpieces, of course, but in the right hands, this culture of weirdness might become actually something that we like. And not all houses in Kuwait are weird. Some houses are uh, well thought out, they, they have appropriate colors, they have appro appropriate styles, and of course, as you'd expect from any uh, respectable architectural firm, they completely ignore the culture of weirdness that surrounds them. But, is that necessary? Because, um, can't we create a house that is both well designed and weird? Can't we create a house that's both well designed and celebrates our cultural tendency towards the bizarre? Can we create a house that's well designed and also bright pink? Well, I think the answer is yes. I think we can. And I think we should. Because when we do this, we'll come up with the residential streets that are uh, definitely unique, that are uh, definitely interesting, and I personally think they would be fun to live in. So uh, let's just hope I graduate soon from college and start building Kuwait with us.